Hello, it's Kyle talking about the myth of cost of living in relation to geography. It's something you'll hear talked a lot about in the news media. You'll hear political pundits talking about this kind of stuff, saying that place X is really expensive and people are being priced out and they're moving to place Y because it's a lot cheaper and a lot easier to make a living there. So in this video, I'm going to take an in-depth, nerdy geographical look from an objective standpoint to see if there really is any truth to some of the stuff you're hearing on this issue on the news media and from the political pundits. I'm originally from California and all of my family still lives there. And California is somewhere that supposedly has a very high cost of living. I now live in Tennessee. I've been here for about 10 years now. And Tennessee is somewhere that supposedly has a very low cost of living. So you take that I've lived in a couple of very different parts of the country. And you combine that with the fact that I've just been studying the U.S. my entire life. I just love learning as much as I possibly can about the country. And I don't know, I'd call myself a reputable source of information on this kind of stuff. And I'm not trying to push a political agenda. This isn't, you know, a red state versus blue state kind of thing. This isn't, you know, political propaganda. But I want to take a more in-depth look at this issue because there's a lot more to it than what you'll hear in the news media. Where this issue originates is the fact that housing and rent prices are much higher in California, Seattle, New York, and other parts of the country that have the high cost of living and housing and rent prices are much cheaper in the Southeast and the Midwest and these places that have the low cost of living. And you'll hear people talk about stats like how much you have to work before you can afford median rent or your median mortgage payment kind of thing. And look at these places along the West Coast and the Northeast. I have to work a whole lot more just to afford my rent. And look at the Southeast and the Midwest. I don't have to work as much to afford rent kind of thing. And then you'll hear people talking about income taxes and the places with the high housing costs tend to be the places with the really high income taxes as well. And wow, that's a double burden on people. That's a, you know, high rent prices and high income taxes. And look at the Southeast and the Midwest. Wow, it's low taxes and low housing costs. It must be much cheaper to live there. And I always find it very interesting that the income taxes and housing costs are the only two things people really consider when trying to determine the cost of living of a certain place. But there's so much more to your cost of living than just your income taxes and your housing costs. So let's get a little more in depth with this. If the only things that affected your cost of living were your housing costs and your income taxes, then the Southeast would be the wealthiest part of the country. And is that true? Well, of course that's not true. In fact, it's the exact opposite. The Southeast is the poorest part of the country, and no matter which indicators you look at to examine the geography of poverty in the U.S., it's pretty clear that the Southeast is the poorest part of the country. It's the place with the highest percentage of the population living in poverty, the highest percentage of the population receiving government assistance through either welfare or food stamps. And if it was so much cheaper to live in the Southeast, then why are there so many more people living in poverty and receiving government aid? And if it's so much more expensive along the West Coast and the Northeast, then why are there so fewer people living on government aid or living in poverty? And the answer is pretty obvious. It's, of course, wages. Wages are a lot higher along the West Coast and the Northeast, where the cost of housing is a lot higher. And wages are significantly lower in the Southeast, where the cost of housing is lower. And, you know, your $800 a month rent payment isn't cheap if you're making $8 an hour. And your $1,300 a month mortgage payment isn't cheap if you're making $30,000 a year. So it all pretty much evens out in the end. And besides, housing isn't the only thing you have monthly expenses for. There are a lot of other things you're, you're spending money on. So let's take a look at what else affects your cost of living. For a lot of people, a big expense is their car payment. Their monthly car payment represents a big chunk of their monthly budget. And say you buy a brand new $25,000 car in Tennessee. Well, how much does that car cost in New York? $25,000, cars cost the same no matter where you go, but if you have a $300 a month car payment and you're making $3,000 a month, that's a much bigger hit relative to your salary than if you make $5,000 a month. So your car payment is gonna be pretty much the same no matter where you live. You think about, say, groceries. Groceries are really expensive. It doesn't really matter where you live. Groceries are gonna pretty much cost the same. And actually, in a lot of times, it's groceries are cheaper in California because so much of your food comes from there doesn't have to be shipped across the country. But anyway, groceries are pretty much the same no matter where you go. Uh, you think about some of your other expenses, your utility bill. And your utility bill is, isn't dependent at all on whether you live somewhere with high or low housing costs. It has much more to do with your climate. So, you know, when you live in California, you don't have to run the air conditioning or the heat as much. I was living in Monterey 
My house didn't have air conditioning or heat, and I didn't need either one of them. My uh, monthly electric bill was next to nothing. And in Tennessee, we run our air conditioning nonstop from May through October. The heater comes on in November. It's pretty much nonstop from November to March. And our monthly electric bills are really expensive. So your electric bills have a lot more to do with the climate you live in than whether or not you have high housing costs. And look at some of your other expenses, your phone bill, your internet provider, say you have cable or satellite, all those kind of things cost the same no matter where you live. And so if you live in, say, a place with high housing costs, your rent or your mortgage payment is going to be a really huge you know, percentage of your monthly salary, but everything else is going to be a lower hit to you relative to how much you're making, as opposed to, say, the southeast where you know, your rent or your mortgage payment might be a smaller part of your monthly budget, but everything else is more expensive relative to your wages. So there's a lot more you spend money on than just your housing costs. You can't just look at your housing costs as a way to indicate whether or not you live somewhere with a high cost of living. All right, so now let's talk about taxes. And I'm not sure why, but whenever people talk about tax, they only ever refer to income taxes as if that's the only tax you pay. But with me being from California, it's a state that has really high income tax. You're going to pay a big chunk of your income in taxes. And I now live in Tennessee, a state with no income tax. So are we a lot better off living in Tennessee from a tax perspective? Well, Tennessee has the highest sales tax in the country at almost nine and a half percent. And in fact, the states with the highest sales taxes are the states that people would say are low tax states. So Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Alabama have the highest sales taxes in the country. And interesting way to look at it is that, you know, we live just a stone's throw away from the Georgia border. And Georgia has an income tax and a lower sales tax in Tennessee. So think about all the things you buy each year, all the money you spend on things. You know, you're paying a little bit more for things if you live in Tennessee than you live in Georgia. And throughout the course of the year, it just really all adds up to the point where it's about the same. So whether you live in Tennessee or Georgia, your tax burden's the same, just they're getting it from a different way. Well, what about Texas? Texas is a supposedly low tax state too. They have no income tax. Well, Texas has just about the highest property taxes in the country. When I was driving across Texas, I would see billboards advertising property tax loans. I'm like, what property tax loans? That's crazy because... You know, I grew up in supposedly high tax California that has some of the lowest property taxes in the country. So, you know, I lived in South Carolina for a few years. They have the most ridiculously high car taxes in the country. I mean, car taxes are a burden for people that live in South Carolina. And so the analogy I use, you, know, you can go to Vegas, you can play crap, you can play the slots, you can play blackjack. It doesn't matter. The house is going to win. You know, you can live in a state with high income tax, high property tax, high sales tax. It doesn't matter. The man's going to win. Of course, there are going to be individual exceptions to this. You can look specifically at San Francisco and Manhattan. These are both incredibly expensive places to live, but they kind of have to be because they're both surrounded by water on three sides and surrounded by suburbs or the Bronx on the fourth side. And, you know, they're both actually pretty small. So there's much more of a crazy supply and demand thing going on there. And you can also look at Hawaii. It's really expensive there. But again, it kind of has to be because can you imagine if it were cheap to live in Hawaii? I mean, everybody would live there, but it doesn't really matter. The whole theme is that it all comes off as a wash. So you can live somewhere with high expenses, but the wages are going to be higher. You can live somewhere with low expenses, but the wages are going to be lower. So it pretty much all evens out in the end. So what's the theme? Is it expensive to live in California, Seattle, Boston, New York, D.C.? Hell yeah, it is expensive to live there. Is it expensive to live in Texas, Tennessee, South Carolina, Alabama? Hell yeah, it's expensive to live there. How you're paying it, the ratio of what you're spending on is going to be different, but it's pretty much going to be expensive no matter where you live. And I think a lot of people that live in these places that have high housing costs somehow think that the grass is greener in some of these places with a lower housing cost, but it really isn't when you factor in the wages. So the bottom line is it's expensive to live no matter where you are in the U.S. The sad reality is that it's becoming more and more difficult for middle-class families to make it regardless of geography. Wages aren't keeping up with inflation and things are becoming more expensive. The number of people that are middle-class keeps going down and the number of people living in poverty keeps going up. And, you know, how do you fix that? Well, I don't know. That's up for the politicians to deal with, but that's just a situation we're, you know, facing right now in the U.S. But I do find it very interesting that a lot of people are packing up their entire families and moving to different parts of the country in search of a higher standard of living to get away from high housing costs. But, you know, like I've discussed in this video, that's really not going to be the case because, you know, your wages are going to be lower. 
you know, if you're getting a big promotion to move across country, that's a lot different because, you know, if your wages are the same moving to a place with a lower housing cost, and yes, your standard of living will go up. But if you're willing to accept a lower wage for lower housing costs, thinking your standard of living is going to go up, well, that's just not going to be the case. Because again, it's not like people in the South or in the Midwest have a bunch of extra cash to play around with because they're living somewhere with low housing costs. It really doesn't matter. It really all comes off as a wasp, regardless of whether you're living somewhere with high housing costs or low housing costs. As you might be able to tell from this video, I think there's a huge benefit of living somewhere with a high housing cost and high wages. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The first is that a dollar is a dollar wherever you go in the country. One US dollar has the same exchange rate wherever you go in the world, regardless of whether you're coming from somewhere with high cost of housing or low cost of housing. So, you know, people that live in the higher wage areas just have more of those dollars. And but the much bigger reason why I think it's better to live somewhere that has expensive housing and higher wages is that say you live in, say, you know, D.C. or Boston or somewhere with high housing costs and you buy a house at age 30, you get a 30 year mortgage that's paid off by the time you're age 60. You can sell that house for, say, you know, $600,000 and then you can move to a place like Tennessee or South Carolina. You can buy a house for $200,000. Put the rest of that money in the bank and you can retire several years earlier and you can't put a price on retiring several years earlier and also you'll be collecting social security benefits based on the wages you made in that higher wage area but now you're living somewhere with lower housing costs so it just i believe it's a win-win to be coming from somewhere with you know high housing costs and higher wages because a dollar is a dollar and people that live in the higher wage places just have more of those dollars I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know it was okay. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, check out my other videos. I'm posting stuff about geography and some U.S. travel stuff. All the stuff about road tripping in the U.S. So if you're interested, subscribe to my channel. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King signing out and about to go buy something and pay 9.5% sales tax on it.